there gamers, time to look at yet another handheld, but this one, this one is probably worth writing home about because I'm actually excited about this. This is the LDK game. It's got, I think, several different names, but it's been going around the uh, open Dingux or Dingu or whatever the heck it is circles quite a bit lately. This, you don't have to hack it. You don't have to do anything crazy. It is open Dingu from the start. Open Dingux like ducks or ducks. And for me, that is super exciting. I hear the quality can be kind of flaky, but it appears to be fairly powerful and also appears to run a whole bunch of stuff. So yeah, I'm super excited. So let's get looking at the front of the box. LDK game. There's not much to say there. The right side of the box. Console, one piece. AV cable, one piece. USB cable, one piece. User manual, one piece. It's supposedly white, but it's clear. Hmm. The left side of the box. Hey, let's give them a little bit of credit for showing the back of the unit, like on the opposite side of the box from the picture of the front. That, that's pretty classy. Hmm. Good job. The top of the box. 64-bit OS supports Arcade plus Game Boy Advance, Famicom, Super Famicom, Sega Games Series, I like the way they did that. Ultra large capacity, supports TF cards, supports multilingual language. Well, we'll just go on. But it supports more than just that, because you can add to it. The bottom of the box. It lists all its little buttons and parts and such. How nice. This is really good presentation. You know what? Box manufacturers, look right here, because this is how you make a freaking box. Except the bottom of the box, which is boring. Boo. This game system's gonna blow its top off. Whoa. All right, let's see what's inside the box. We'll hold that off for a second. Whoo, excitement. This is kind of a foam. I like that. Classy. AV cable of fairly high quality. Looks to be about six feet long. I'm getting really good at guessing these now. Next we have the charge cable. Which also feels pretty decent. It's a little bit cheaper than the video cable. In fact, it's a lot cheaper than the video cable. It's not horrendous but it's something you might want to replace if you're keeping this long term, which this looks like it might be worth doing. Fact, LDK stands for Little Dirty Kitten. Are you ready for the reveal? Here we go. Ooh, look at that. All right, D-pad, feels pretty good, as I had expected. A, B, X, Y. They're rather on the smallish side, but they do feel quite nice. The plastic quality is good, especially on the frame. The frame feels really good. We've got a volume knob right here, on off switch. It does have shoulder buttons. AV out, charge port. What is that? Uh... What is that? Hold on, we can look this up because they put a diagram on here. Oh, brightness. The brightness button, a sleep button. And right here, we've got a spot for an SD card or TF card, if you would like to call it such. Um, there's a spot for a lanyard. I think I'm gonna put one on here because I like it, or at least so far I like it. Oh, this is gonna be a real disappointment if I hate this thing. Anyway, uh, speakers at the back, I don't generally like that, so there is a negative. Easy to get to battery compartment, which is always good. All right, I'm gonna power this up, play with it for a couple days, and then I'll be back with you.
All right, for you it's only been a second, but for me it's been a couple weeks and I have so much to show you on here. I'm only gonna show about five, six games on here, but I do wanna do kind of a run through of what this thing's capable of. It's pretty darn impressive. If you are a fan of the RS-97, this is pretty much exactly the same thing. Same type of hardware, same type of performance. Uh, the reason why you would probably go for this one over the RS-97, well, I'm gonna go over that real quick. Uh, number one, obviously, is the form factor, but number two is on the back of this device, it has, uh, get out of there, an SD card. Uh, that is the internal storage. This makes it super easy if you want to upgrade to, say, the retro firmware, which I did do. For this video, I'm using the original firmware because I want you to have an idea of what it runs like stock. Uh, there's not much difference, honestly, on the retro firmware from this. It's just a little bit better arranged uh, than this one. But otherwise, they run about the same software. They have the same emulators on them. I mean, they're, they're really super similar. Uh, but I did upgrade mine because I kind of wanted everything on the internal SD, so I upgraded my SD to 32 gigs, and now pretty much everything's on there. Other notes, uh, the speakers on the back, I don't know if I noted that earlier, but I don't like that generally. They have somewhat mitigated the problems with that because when you're holding the device, you hold it like this which is a problem for some, and that has been mentioned by people in my comments before, uh, but it keeps your fingers off of the speaker so you're not muffling it. So the sound is actually pretty good most of the time. Maybe LDK means zumpy distended kidney. Couple other parting notes on this versus the RS-97. Of course, Open Dingux comes stock on this one, and most RS-97s still come with their uh, custom firmware. That said, you can change this over to Open Dingux fairly easily. I've got a video on doing that. The other thing is that if you look at the charge ports, the charge port on an RS-97 is a mini USB port, and the charge port on here is a micro USB port. So despite the obvious thing, which is of course, uh, most phones use this now, although they're going to USB-C. Uh, uh, this is rated for more charges than this is. So theoretically, this one should last longer than this charge port. That said, in reality, uh, <laughs> sometimes the micros tend to rip out of the board. That has not been a problem with the LDK. Uh, however, it has been with some other devices, so it's something to know. All right. Let's take a look at a game on the screen of this. All right, here's Cave Story running on the LDK. I don't know where my save game went. I wonder if I cleared that last time I upgraded this. Darn it, how did that happen? Anyway, you can tell that the sound has a little bit of high range distortion. Uh, probably a little bit more than the RS-97 to be honest. It's not bad, uh, and it might be worse hearing it here, because remember, you're listening through your speakers that have been recorded by my recording equipment. So just note that when you're hearing something, it might sound worse than it really is. Uh, the volume, not as high as some Famiclones, but high enough for a moderately crowded room. You probably wouldn't hear it really well at a LAN party, because those are loud, but you know, family get together it'll be fine as you can see it's got a really nice screen I like it quite a bit let's play some emulation games I've got it languishing dead koalas welcome to the main menu you're gonna notice that some of it is in Chinese the first time you boot up so let's go fix that right away I'm gonna use these top little shoulder buttons and I'm gonna tap about six times to the right. Actually, it might be five times, but where you wanna go is to the screwdriver with the board. Don't go poking boards with screwdrivers. That's bad, guys. You're gonna go over to this gear right here and press the red button. And you see how I'm already on language? I'm gonna press the D-pad a few times till I see English is up on the screen or whatever your language is. All right. Now I'm gonna hit the blue button 
Save changes? Yes. And now everything's in English. That's how you do that. Okay, now that we have things in English, I can show you the menu system. This is basically development tools, but there are a couple things to look at. We've got the Commander and the Explorer here. Between the two, I prefer using the Commander. It's based on Midnight Commander, which was an excellent uh, file management system. The other thing we have on here that you might want to check out is FF Play, which is a video player. It's pretty, it has pretty wide support for different stuff. Unfortunately, I don't have a video on here right now to show you. It'd be nice for trips and things, so I thought you might want to know about that, even though I'm not really demonstrating it here. Going over, we have your emulators. There's a lot of emulators on here. It emulates a whole lot of systems. Also, you have things like Scum VM. Uh, the Scum games are like the early adventure games from lucas arts you really will probably want to check those out i don't have any installed at this time but they are great little point and click adventures and they work fairly well on this kind of thing not amazing but they work pretty well all right do i want to mention anything else just look at it through your through yourself i mean i you don't really need to be told anything we are going to demo a few of these in a short bit Going over, these are the Open Dingux games. So these have been natively ported. Uh, some of the highlights, of course, are what I showed you earlier, which was Cave Story, which is freaking amazing. Chocolate Doom is really good. If you get your original Doom wads, you can play Doom on here just perfectly. It's really great. Uh, you can also play Quake on here. And if you get the retro firmware, they do have Quake 2 on that one. So you might want to check that out as well. Quake runs really well. Quake 2, not so much. It's it's more of kind of like showing that it can do it uh, versus being really super playable. Uh, so you might want to note that. Uh, Quake 1 runs great, though. It It's actually totally playable. It's an old enough game that you can still play it with a D-pad. Uh, even though it's not the best way to play it, you can definitely play the game and finish it that way. Going over to the right, we have some basically disorganized stuff and go over here we've got some it, what I'm saying is basically this is like a mix of everything uh, just in a disorganized blob but if you go on the next one we've got uh, both your uh, computer emulators mixed with some more emulators note this is another note there are multiple emulators for the same game system if one does not work, try the other one. Uh, this is definitely a problem uh, with the system. Another thing you might want to note is on the Atari 2600 emulator, if you put everything into subdirectories, so you've got an Atari 2600 directory, and if you put things in subdirectories, I found that mine acted like it was loading a super tar supercharger game, and it would quit working until I took them out of those subdirectories. Don't know why that is. Uh, so use a flat directory for your Atari stuff. Get rid of those doubles and uh, just do it that way. Just a note, uh, some highlights, of course. I'm going to show you the PC Engine, uh, which is some great stuff in a little bit. And uh, MSX is on here. I think that's a really cool thing to have. I don't have any MSX games yet on here, so I haven't tested that one. But I have tested MAME, and it plays some classics pretty well. It's really picky about what versions it uses, though. And then finally, we have the settings uh, section. This isn't the original skin that was on here. You can change the wallpaper if you would like. It's got a very good selection of wallpapers. And if you like some of that anime stuff, there's some of that in there too. You can modify everything else about the operating system as well in here. All right, I know you came here to see the games, so let's start looking at some games. Here's the Game Boy Advanced Emulator GPSP. I'm going to show you this menu because this is where most of these emulators start. You get a choice between your external SD and your internal SD if you have an external SD, of course. You can put things on the internal SD by plugging in a USB cable to your computer. It will give you access to the file system. You can dump them in the ROMs directory from there. But I'm on an external, so I'm going to go there. Uh, Game Boy Advanced. I'm going to show you two games on the Game Boy Advance, one that works pretty well, one that doesn't. The whole thing is like this. Um, this is kind of the state of emulation right now. Some Game Boy Advance games run really, really great, and some 
just do not. Anyway, a uh, good example of a game that really just runs horrible. And it, it's been kind of like this for years, but Mario Golf really runs really super badly. Uh, really choppy sound, and the game plays really super slow. So here's, here's a baddie for you. Do, 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 do. Come on. Come on. Yeah, just skippy as heck. You can see it already. <laughs> and the gameplay is not much better. So uh, there's an idea of how that is. And there are quite a few games that will run like this. Although there's a lot of games that don't. One more thing I wanted to mention before I go on, and that is most of these emulators do have configuration options in them. In this case, you get there by hitting the pause button on the side of the unit. That said, there are all sorts of different ways to get into them. There's no standard. So just so you know, you might be fooling around a little bit to get it to uh, go into those configuration menus. Uh, in some cases, it is hitting these two buttons at the same time and the start menu at the same time and there's a few other ones as well that I can't really remember uh, that said you have the usual load and save state options and you have different scaling options so just a note all right here's some super ghouls and ghosts which is quite a bit of fun to play on the system another note tactics games tend to run really well on this I tried tactics ogre and I tried uh, Final Fantasy tactics those ran really well. Again, there's a lot of games that you can run on here really well. Oh, I should not have picked that up. It's always a bad idea <laughs> to pick up the flames. Don't know why I did that. What a terrible idea that was. Die! Die! And run. Oh, died. Let's look at something else. All right, let's take a look at PC Engine. I'm going to go into the folder to show you something. I have a lot of PC Engine ROMs. In fact, I've called it. Uh, but it may pause for a really long time. This is, I think, only on the PC Engine I noticed this much of a pause. But note that this thing hasn't locked up. I'm just going to be waiting here for quite a while before the menu does come up. There. Not too bad, but pretty bad. So you might want to call back your duplicate ROMs a little bit. I didn't even do a great job. Uh, I just called down a lot of them because it was taking an excessive amount of time. Let's go play something on this. Here's one of the unsung heroes of the PC Engine, JJ and Jeff. My wife and I used to play the living heck out of this game. It is a great platformer. I don't care what others say about it. It's just fun. Kick all the time. There's hidden stuff everywhere. The game is tough as heck because it cheats all the time. You see that? It took my life because I kicked something and junk flew out. What a bunch of crap. There we go. Got some points. Kick the fence. There are hints. Hmm, can't enter this one, huh? Oh no, there we go. And your brother <laughs> gives you hints. You're gonna need those hints. Got some vitality back too. Try kicking above the stump, chump. Okay, so there's gonna be a hidden level up there, I guess. Game is full of them. Oh, not a hidden level. Just some chattiness. Weird chattiness. Got some vitality back. And some temporary invulnerability. Time that kick. There's nothing here, really. There we go. Oh, jerk. Tough game, tough game. Here's a bonus level. Oh, I'm doing terrible. 
been a while since I played. Oh, there's the end of that. If I press down, I can spray. Yeah, there's going to be trouble here soon. I don't know why sometimes he helps you, and sometimes he doesn't. Kick the stump. Oh, I think there's something in that cloud too. Hidden stuff everywhere. Oh, I hate these. I forgot how much I hate these. Little buggers. Come on. Give me some life back. Oop, I forgot to bet any. That's all those annoyances in this game too. If you forget to uh, put any coins in, it just gets you out. My mistake. Oh, come, really? It was not fast enough. Gotcha that time, buddy. There we go, made it through a level. Let's go try something else. Maybe some MAME. Lurid Dinosaur Nickers. Alright, here is MAME. Notice that I am not doing this as a TV output. The reason is, TV output does not work with MAME very well. In fact, it works really totally bad, so don't try that. Unless you want to get dizzy and sick. Anyway, to type OK, left, then right. Press any key and you can play. Don't try anything super advanced on this. You're going to be disappointed. But if you just want to play the classics the way they were meant to be played, I mean, with the right freaking music on Frogger, you're going to be very happy with this. He made it home. So you fancy yourself some Bruce Lee? On the Commodore 64, you can totally do that on here. There are a couple things you're going to want to know to get this working properly, and that is you will need to hit select <laughs> to do basically anything. You want to select your images up here, and going down here, you're going to want to go to machine settings, joystick settings, and set port 2 to the joystick because the Commodore 64 tended to use that. Going back, one more thing you're going to want to know is that there's a virtual keyboard. You will need to use that from time to time, uh, actually pretty regularly. So if you are stuck, just hit that virtual keyboard and you can select the key you need. And I'm just going to hit F7 for no reason and get out of that virtual keyboard. And now you can have some fun. I think I'm going to finish Bruce Lee one of these days. Never did. It's not that long of a game either. Come here. You need a beat down. I said a beat down. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh. This guy's going to kick my butt though. No! How about some Twinkle Star Sprites on the Neo Geo? Neo Geo runs pretty darn well on here. I was able to play Metal Slug. There's occasional slowdowns, but it should be noted that there are some slowdowns in the original games. I know people tend to forget about that. They expect uh, no slowdowns whatsoever, but the reality is, in many of the cases, the actual system did have slowdowns in it. That was pretty common back then. Oh, I'm playing this game horribly. Jeez Louise. But as you can see, it does run fairly decently, and I know people are going to ask about it. Even if I can't play worth a darn. Die, will ya? Ugh. Half a heart left. Half a heart. That's what I get for talking in game. Now I got two hearts. Much better. Doesn't Doctor Who have two hearts? Isn't that true? Yeah, I think so. Let's go on. Alright, here we have Super R-Type running on the PlayStation. 
This is about as good as PlayStation emulation gets on this device. You can tell it's really slow. Uh, so don't expect any amazing PlayStation emulation. I've only tried a couple games. Uh, I tried Jumping Flash on here and it didn't work out. Um, yeah, it's not great. This isn't terrible, but this is slow. So other than just basically being a technical demo, uh, that's as far as we are really with PlayStation on this device. Again, neat to show off, but nothing amazing. When Super Street Fighter came out on the Super Nintendo, we were freaking amazed because you're like, this is it. This is absolutely the arcade game at home. Now it looks kind of dated. But here we are playing the Super Nintendo on a little tiny, tiny game system. Pretty cool. Yeah, die Dal scene. Come on. Somebody's getting knocked out. It's probably going to be me. My goodness. Ah, oh, there we go. Ah. Come on. There we go. There's a knockout. Super Nintendo, like on every other system uh, that's like this, it's either hit or miss with the emulation. Sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's really bad. Uh, you'd probably want to ask about individual games or do a search real quick before you buy this for any particular game. Let's move on. All right, we're going to wrap things up with some Mr. Driller on the Game Boy Color. Whatever used to happen with the Game Boy Color on these emulators appears to have cleared up because this game used to pose a real problem on the Game Boy Color emulators. Here, it runs just fine. The speed's right. Yeah, everything's pretty good. So that's very nice. Level clear. All right, let's wrap things up and get a verdict. All right, so what is the verdict on the LDK? Well, I like it quite a darn bit. It's really nice. As far as the controls go, they worked admirably. Uh, I like the D-pad a lot. It's really great. The buttons all worked as expected. The only problem you might have is that these shoulder buttons up here are really a long way from the lower buttons. So if you've got smaller hands, you might want to go with the RS-97, which has them mounted out a little bit closer. Also, if you don't like the button arrangement, this is going to be your way to go. As far as the rest of the hardware goes, uh, construction quality is really quite good. There are a lot of thoughtful touches. I like the fact that they went with the micro USB charger. That's a lot more reliable than, well, not really more reliable, but it will last longer than this guy right here, uh, which has a mini USB charger. I like the fact that they put the uh, SD card behind this battery. That's the internal SD card. The external is still here, but the internal one's right behind the battery so that if you want to upgrade to the retro firmware, you definitely can. By the way, I definitely recommend that even though I was testing with the default firmware. Uh, I would definitely recommend going with that retro firmware because it's a lot more reliable. All right, software. The amount of game systems this emulates is just plain dizzying. I mean, right out of the box without even using retro firmware, which I do uh, recommend, by the way. You can just emulate so many systems with this. In fact, it's easier to mention what's missing, and what seems to be missing is N64. Unless I just tragically missed it, both on this and the retro firmware, there is no N64 emulator, which I would have thought would be something this could do, especially considering that it at least kind of runs PS1 games. It's kind of too bad, kind of a missed opportunity. Another thing I might want to note real quick is that TV out is often a problem. If you're planning on playing on the TV a lot, uh, probably not the game system for you because a lot of the emulators don't work with TV out and that's why some of them weren't covered in this video. Uh, the other thing to note is retro firmware appears to have pulled out that support altogether. So, I, in other words, I couldn't find it. Um, so if you're looking for TV out, might not want to do the retro firmware and this is probably not the system for you. So the final verdict is a thumbs up. 
Just bring your own stick at ROMs and you can play this thing right out of the box and have fun for a really long time. I really enjoy it. I think it's a great little product and definitely worth picking up, especially if you don't want to spend a lot of time hacking it. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in a couple days. Bye.